I'm Steven and this is Flipper Channel. Let's take a look at the fascinating Model T transmission. It's unique in the automotive world and is unlike other clutch and gearbox transmissions of its day. In a lot of ways, it shares more in common with automatic transmissions than manual gearboxes. This is the GM Hydromatic, which many consider to be the first mass-produced modern automatic transmission. Like the Hydromatic, the Model T transmission has planetary gears and clutch plate stacks. The Model T uses a single planetary set of three gears called the triple gears. Each of the triple gears has three pitch diameters. The larger one is for low and the other two are for reverse. In high, the planetary set is not used. To illustrate the inner workings more clearly, I'm going to refer to some CAD models and to the original Henry Ford patent. These original old patents are really neat. The patent diagrams are particularly impressive, an art form indeed. Let's take a closer look. In October 1911, Henry Ford received a patent for his Model T planetary gear transmission. This patent covers the transmission only in relation to the rest of the drivetrain. This transmission, with only minor changes, was used from 1909 to 1927 and proved to be simple, robust, easy to use, and had remarkable design endurance. Figure 1 of the patent itemizes the essential elements of the invention, including the flywheel, attached to the output of the crankshaft, the drums, and the multiplate clutch. Figure 3 is simply a beautiful drawing. It's a partial section view with very fine detail showing the inner workings of the transmission. But if you are not familiar with complex engineering drawings, it can be a bit overwhelming. We'll study it together now, and I'll help you make sense of it. I've taken the liberty of coloring figure 3 to try to make it more clear. You'll see that I've made the engine and the crankshaft and the flywheel with magnets orange. Everything orange spins at the same RPM. The red shaft is the output to the drive shaft or prop shaft. Everything red spins with the rear wheels. So if the vehicle is stationary, the red stuff isn't turning. If the car is putting along in high gear with the drive shaft and crankshaft at a one-to-one -one ratio, then the orange and red shafts are coupled and are spinning at the same speed in unison. You can see the gray planetary triple gears and the blue reverse drum and gear and the green low speed drum and gear. The red brake drum is shown also. Let's take a closer look. There are three primary mechanisms within the transmission. The multi-plate wet clutch, the drums and bands, and the planetary triple gears. The triple gears are always meshed. They don't engage and disengage, so there is never any grinding of gears. This makes the T-transmission work simply and smoothly. The triple gears are always in mesh with the drum gears that are on the center axis. With all three drum gears meshed with the triple gears, they are always turning at different rates to one another. By stopping one of the drums, the output ratio of the drive shaft is altered. I'll show that interrelationship of gears and ratios later. The drums are controlled by the pedals, so let's start there. The three pedals each operate one band each. Depressing a pedal clamps the bands onto the respective drum and stops the drum from rotating, thereby forcing the planetary gear set into a different mode. A band squeezes on a drum and slows it to a stop with some slippage as it slows. I'll be using consistent color coding throughout the video. Green is the left low neutral high range selector pedal. Blue is the middle reverse pedal, and red is the right brake pedal. The green pedal also has a linkage to release the multi-plate clutch spring. 
This may be why the left green pedal is often called the clutch pedal. But I won't use that name because it's misleading. The Model T does not have a pedal operated clutch like a Model A has, for instance. I will call it the low neutral high pedal or the range selector pedal or simply the left pedal. More on that in the next chapter. On the left pedal, all the way down is low gear, halfway is neutral, and all the way up is high gear. That's it. There's no gear lever, no pedal clutch per se. All the way up engages the multi-plate wet clutch to engage high gear via linkage. More about that in the next chapter. The middle pedal engages reverse. And the right pedal is the transmission brake. This CAD model is using the same color scheme and it helps us visualize things. Imagine this is a real transmission that has a quarter pie piece cut out so we can see inside and the bands have been removed so they don't cover the inner workings. Lines are drawn on the drum surfaces just so you can see movement the multi-plate clutch connects the orange crankshaft to the red drive shaft when the left pedal is released. The spring then compresses the plates together and then all the orange stuff connects to the red stuff with a little slippage as the two speeds synchronize. This slippage enables low to high shifting without a traditional driver operated clutch. As mentioned previously, the multi-plate clutch will allow the crankshaft orange to be directly connected to the drive shaft red. This means that in high gear the drive shaft is turning at engine RPM. Notice in high gear the effective flywheel is huge. All of the transmission components are spinning with the flywheel including the triple gears, drums and clutch. This is one of the reasons why the Model T can putt along smoothly and effortlessly in high gear at very low RPM. You can see that the right red pedal will squeeze a band onto the red brake drum and will slow and stop everything that is red, including the drive shaft and thereby stop the rear wheels through the axle. If the car is in high gear, then the brake drum is also trying to slow the engine crankshaft because the drive shaft and crankshaft are coupled through the multi-plate clutch when you're in high gear. The brake band does a lot of work. This is why on newer Model T's, Ford increased the width of the brake band and the drum. The function of the low and reverse drums is a little less intuitive. The drum is held firm by the pedal and the band. When the green left pedal is pressed to the floor, it squeezes the band on the green low speed drum and stops it from turning. This forces the transmission into a low ratio. Look at the relative motion of the orange flywheel compared with the much slower turning red drive shaft. Low gear in the Model T results in lots of wear and tear on the transmission parts because there is so much relative motion between the components. This also makes low gear noisy as you can hear the gear mesh and the rattle of any sloppy clearances. Note that the driver must keep the pedal firmly to the floor the entire time he wants to be in low gear. On a long mountain climb or over the course of a parade, the driver can get a very tired and very sore left leg. When the blue middle reverse pedal is pressed, the reverse band tightens on the blue drum and stops it. Then the transmission is in reverse. Let's take a closer look at the Ford patent itself. If you're not familiar with patents, they can really seem to be gobbledygook. Even if you understand the drawings well, the text can be daunting. I'm going to read the claims to you. The claims are the legal definition of what is protected by the patent. You'll see at line 95 on page 2 the phrase, what I claim as my invention is, that's where I'm starting. In an automobile, a motor having a flywheel and a shaft with an extension beyond the flywheel, 
a transmission shaft in substantial alignment with the motor shaft, a sleeve journaled on the extension in the non-rotatable engagement with the transmission shaft, a brake drum rotatable on the extension secured to the sleeve, a clutch adapted to lock the drum and extension together, and a change speed and reverse drive planetary train. Two, in an automobile, the combination of a transmission shaft and a motor having a flywheel and a shaft with an extension beyond the flywheel in substantial alignment with the transmission shaft. Mounted on a flywheel, concentrically disposed on the shaft, adapted to couple the member to the shaft independently of the clutch. Six, the combination in an automobile of a motor having a shaft. A gear on the brake drum hub adjacent to the flywheel. A clutch drum secured on the flywheel hub within the brake drum. Friction discs adapted when engaged to couple the brake and clutch. Sun gears journaled concentrically on the brake drum hub in stepped relation to the drum. Planet driving pinions on the flywheel stepped to mesh with the sun gears and means for frictionally arresting the drums. Did you catch all that? I hope you were paying attention. There's a quiz at the end of the video. But seriously, we can enjoy the innovation and ingenuity of these early mechanical wonders without diving deep into the patent. This patent provided Henry Ford with protection for his transmission design. The Model T used this transmission, virtually unchanged, from 1909 to 1927. No other manufacturers, to my knowledge, copied the T transmission or even licensed it from Ford. But automatic transmissions, right up to current day, can trace their technology back to the venerable Model T. Only the proliferation now of the electric car, which doesn't need a shiftable transmission, threatens the dominance of the planetary transmission that Henry Ford developed over a hundred years ago.